What's going on everyone? My name is Andrew and welcome to Real Estate Basics. This is episode seven, part one. And today I'll be showing you how to quickly evaluate a rental property in less than a minute. So there are a lot of metrics you need to take into consideration when evaluating a deal. Cash flow and cash on cash return are two very important metrics. Those can be very time consuming to run through the full calculations. Instead, when we're scrolling through the MLS listings trying to find our initial deal, we're going to use these percentage thumb rules. Now there are other metrics you need to take into consideration, but we'll cover those at a later time. So the 1% rule also referred to as a 2% rule. I like to refer to these as my go no go test. So the 1% rule suggests that 1% of the purchase price should be what the monthly rent is. If the monthly rent divided by the property value is greater than or equal to 1%, then it should cash flow. Otherwise, it probably won't. And it goes without saying that the higher the percentage of monthly rent to property value is, the more that property will cash flow. Quick example, single family rental purchase price of $200,000. Well, according to the 1% rule, rent should be $2,000 per month or more in order to positively cash flow. So how do you use the 1% rule? Well, first you need to identify what type of property, what your strategy is, and your market location. Once you have those, get some rental comps from your realtor and or property manager. Then when you're looking at MLS listings or your favorite third party app like Zillow or Redfin, use the 1% rule against the purchase price of the potential deals and see how closely those compare to the rental comps. So I've set up a simple spreadsheet to use the 1% rule. Up top, I have my goals. I know I'm looking for a three bed, two bath, single family home with a minimum cash flow of $300 per month and a minimum cash on cash return on investment of 10%. I know based on this market and the rental comps I got from my realtor that this type of property will rent anywhere between $2,000 and $2,300 per month. So once you find a property that looks good to you, you plug in the purchase price and multiply by 1% and compare that to the rental comps. So you can see for this purchase price, this particular property would in fact meet the 1% rule. Now if the purchase price was higher, say 300,000, you can see now 1% is $3,000. This property for these rental comps would not meet the 1% rule. And I would just pass and not even look at the property further. Now let's take a look at the 50% rule. The 50% rule suggests that half of the property's income will be used on expenses, such as taxes, insurance, utilities, HOA, property manager, and your reserves. It does not cover your mortgage, your principal and interest. We'll get to that in a second. So an example going back to our cash flow episode, episode number two, this single family rental, which rented for $1,400 per month, gave us a cash flow of $249 a month. If we were to apply the 50% rule in this case, 50% of the rent, $1,400, is $700, which means if we $700 is used for expenses and the other $700 is left to then pay the mortgage, in this case was $506 a month, and that leaves us with a cash flow of $194 per month. Now you can see how it compares to our actual calculation. It gets us in the ballpark. It's not an exact number because things such as property taxes and how much we're actually setting aside for our reserves will affect our actual cash flow number. But you can use the 50% rule to quickly evaluate what your cash flow is going to be. So how do you use the 50% rule? 
very similar to the 1% rule. Once I go through and evaluate a property and I see that, hey, it meets the 1% rule, now I'm going to look at the 50% rule and assess what the monthly cash flow is and compare that to my minimum standards. Going back to the spreadsheet that we used earlier to evaluate the 1% rule, now we just need a little bit more information before we can evaluate the 50% rule. We need to know how much of a down payment we're going to be using and what the terms of our loan are going to be. That we will need in order to calculate what our mortgage payment is going to be, the principal and interest. Then we apply the 50% rule. I like to use the low end of the rental comps to give me more margin on my numbers. You can see that half of $2,000 is $1,000 and subtracting the mortgage payment from $1,000 leaves us with $105.81. Now that is our cash flow per month according to the 50% rule. Now even though this property met the 1% rule and it does positively cash flow based on my minimum standard of $300 per month for cash flow, I'm going to pass on this deal. Now if the 50% rule came back at around $200 per month, that is reasonably close and I would then go in to do a full analysis on cash flow and cash on cash ROI. So you can see once you have your systems in place, utilizing the 1% rule and 50% rule can be done in less than a minute. Now there's another thumb rule that can be used, the 70% rule. This is mostly used for flippers or wholesalers. What it suggests is that the most you should pay for a property is 70% of the after repair value or ARV minus your rehab costs. This isn't used for a buy and hold strategy, which is the strategy I'm focused on. So we won't cover it today. However, when we talk about the burr strategy, uh, or flipping later on in this channel, we'll talk about the 70% rule. So next time we are going to dive on in to net worth return on investment and how to calculate it. In closing, use the thumb rules when you're initially searching for a deal. It'll help you to quickly narrow down properties that have potential. When it comes close to meeting the 1% rule, take a look at the 50% rule and then dive on in to other analyses such as cash flow and cash on cash return that take a little bit more time to calculate. And just remember there are a lot of different metrics to be mindful of when evaluating a property. That's all for this one. So if you like this content, please like and subscribe. And until next time, take care.